How's it going? Dave here from Evolve Lab. Ferris 2.0 has been released. Today, I'll guide you through all the new improvements. The standout feature of 2.0 is the 3D viewer, but the team has also made a ton of improvements to the render selection tool, and there's honestly too many to list in a quick intro. So enough talking, let's get into it. All right, inside of SketchUp now, got this cool model, and let's go ahead and get Ferris going. So I already have a prompt together for this, but the first thing I want to point out is that this is now a web app and you won't have to install updates nearly as frequently to see new features. And a perfect example of that is right here. We can now minimize the preset groups, makes it a little bit easier to find things. And you can also reorganize these. I can kind of drag them into whatever position makes sense to me and they'll stay that way. But getting into the results, Maybe let's go with this one. And the first thing that I want to do is hop over to the edit tab. Over here, we've made a lot of improvements to the render selection tool. So first, let me start with masking something out. So the first thing you probably notice is that I'm able to mask multiple regions now. And another thing to note is that we can invert it. So if you want to keep only this and render everything else, it's a quick way to do it. But why don't I give this a more specific prompt of stained wood siding. And I'll leave the context of it being a modern home built into a mountain. And let's just render out some options. And while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to go ahead and start framing up the next thing that I want to do. This kind of looks more like asphalt than gravel, so I'm going to mask it out and it'll give me a good opportunity to talk about a new feature. Before you would have to really dial in and get the perfect corner, but now you can just click a little beyond the canvas and it'll perfectly grab the edges and corners. So I'll just hit the checkbox to kind of save it and I can just cancel right out because I'll look through my result. Maybe I like this one the best. I can actually just recall that. You have all your history here, so I could recall that if I wanted to run some more options or if now I want to take action on this. And one thing to note here, I have a pretty smooth surface and I'm asking for something that's a little rough. So I'm going to give it a little geometry override. Uh, otherwise, it can kind of get hung up on what the substrate is. And while I'm waiting, I'll go ahead and mask out this pool area. Kind of have that ready to go. That's a good first result. That one looks pretty good too. So I think this first one makes the most sense considering the lighting. And one thing to point out now is that we can favorite. So I'll go ahead and favorite that and maybe favorite one of these. And if I click this button here, I can collapse down to just what's on my favorites list. You can remove things from the favorites just by clicking that corner star, but it's not gone for good. It's just gone from that favorites list. So just another tool in your you know, arsenal of staying organized. So let's go with that favorite and I'll go ahead and apply that mask for the pool. And I don't think I need the home in there anymore. And again, I, I do want a little geometry override because I think it's going to look a little bit different than what the substrate image is. And let's go ahead and render some shots. All right, so not really happy with any of those results. So I'm going to go ahead and remask it and render out a little bit more. So I think this is my best option. And hopefully that gives you a little insight into, you know, a typical workflow of resolving issues. All right. So the next thing that I want to show is the 3D viewer, probably the standout feature of 2.0. And the way to get that going is we just click here on the three side of the mode switch. And as soon as you click it, it'll start the export process. Depending on the complexity of your model, this could take some time. So just be patient. All right, so I have the view now and I can rotate by pressing my middle mouse button. 
and you do want to take note of where your mouse is positioned when you press because that'll be the rotation point. So you can see here, if I uh, click on those flowers instead, I'll get that rotation around that point. And zoom works kind of similar. If I roll my mouse wheel forward, it's going to zoom in where I'm pointed. If I roll it back, it'll zoom out. So just kind of be aware of where your mouse is positioned. And I can pan around as well by pressing shift while I press the middle mouse button and move. And to get back, like I still have that view framed up in SketchUp. If you want to resync, we have this button right here. That'll just kind of match your view. We also have a live sync if you prefer to change your view in your authoring app then you can kind of quickly make those adjustments and it'll just keep the two cameras in sync but let me get a couple renderings going so clicking through the results you'll see that the model accuracy is a little bit stronger because we're actually able to build a depth map and you'll notice a bit of a delay for now. The team is working on resolving that. But we get some really powerful, or a, a really powerful tool in the Edit tab. Here, I still have the, the same ability to draw regions, but I also have the ability to select by material. So here, I could just really quickly make an entire selection of all of that wood. And then, similar to what I did before, I can render out some options. But as long as the material has a unique material ID, it'll get detected. So if I go back in here, I could you know, really easily select the water. And if I press shift, maybe I wanna select a few things at the same time and prompt just those elements. And if I wanna you know, reset my selection, I can either you know, just click anywhere and that will deselect it all or click on just another single object. But adding, your shift in will just add more to the selection or deselect things as well. And as those come back, we favorite them so that I can quickly kind of compare. Really powerful tool for just making a very precise selection and trying out new things. So that wraps it up. Varus 2.0, really a focus on control and refinement. And it makes that process of honing in on that final product a lot easier. We have all those new tools around render selection and then the 3D viewer making it possible to select materials and get a really perfect mask. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date. Thanks for watching and have a great day.